I don't know if this is set up properly or working properly. I've never, we've never done it like this before. This is a, this is a new setting. It is 9.06. Hello, everybody. Um, and uh, let's just check out. Oh, we have a viewer. So, okay, so I'm an hour and a half. Ah, 34 viewers. Now we're talking. So I'm an hour and a half early. I'm an hour and a half early. And um, because we're going to film at Sunset Sound. So I'm, uh, thank you. Ah, 124 viewers, 132. That's wonderful. I'm trying to see if I can see your chats. I cannot see any chats, which um, is a little live chat. There you go. No. No, negatory. See, this is this is where it was supposed to come from. So this was this is wrong. See, it's mm. it's not up there. So everybody that had the email sent to them is not going to see this. That's why I was saying. It. Okay. All right. So I'm really sorry. Um, okay, everybody. Hope you're all doing marvelously well. Um, it is nine oh eight, and today we're going over to Sunset Sound. And um, we're going to Sunset Sound, and um, we um, are going to be filming with Daryl Thorpe. Does everybody know Daryl Thorpe? He's rather wonderful. I'm trying to see where I can find your chat because uh, we went into the wrong window here. So all a little disorganized. Uh, we'd had it organized one way, and it got last minute changed. Yeah, sorry everybody. Um, I can see one person saying, looking forward to this, but I cannot see the chat. Are you there, Matt? Diamante? It says, go there to see the chat. Okay. Okay, I can see it on my cell phone. Sorry about this. All got a little... Uh, all got a little uh i see your chat now zach finally it's uh it, it's all gone a little pear shaped here but uh we're good so um so we're going to sunset sound studio one and uh we're working with daryl thorpe and we're going to do a video and we're going to record a band and we're going to do it with a combination of one mic and several mics. So how phenomenally wonderful is that? Daryl's amazing. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun. So, yeah. Oh, I, I love how Matt, that's genius. In the chat, he said, go here to see the chat. <laughs> that's a great one, isn't it? Um, anyway, I hope everybody's doing marvelously well. Let's Let's start off. By first of all doing a giveaway, let's do a giveaway because you can get away. You can give away that you can get the course that we talked about yesterday. So, um, what do I want to ask for that? First of all, I'm going to go and do a. Um, I'm going to go and do this video at Sunset Sound with uh, Daryl Thorpe, and we're going to do it with one mic. So my question would be, hmm, if you only had one mic, if you only had one mic. This is a chance to win the Bob Horn and my course, the mixing course. If you only had one mic, what mic would it be? If you only had one mic, what's your desert island mic? If you could only have one mic, what would it be? Uh, 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 I'm looking at all the chat here on my cell phone. Cheers from Washington. Hello in Costa Rica. I am going to use the echo chamber. I know, Alexi, it would be really, really good. I don't know Chimbinha. I don't. But hello in Brazil. Yeah, if you only had one mic, what would it be? Oh, the new YouTube uh, notifications do come in, t in time, yeah. Um... Do, do, do. Hello there in Missouri. Ton of comments. Yes, please. We're all placed. Uh, yeah. Hey, Tom. Hey, Steve. So if you don't have one mic, what would it be? I'm looking here. Slate VMS. That's nice. U87. Sounds good on everything. Sure, 57. 
Aston Origin Mike, another 57. The Delphos, a U47, a 57. No idea. That's honest. That's a good honest answer. I'm fine with that. LCT 440. That's one of the best all-round budget mics by far. A Coles 4038. That's an interesting choice. That would definitely give you a very specific sound. Um, so, yeah, that's good. C414, a 57. Um, so David Killer B says a 421. Or a, dy oh, a Dynamic 42. I actually don't know what a Dynamic 42 is. A 57, a Chandler Red mic, 58s, 414s, 7Bs, 47s, LCT 440 again. Um, 414, 440s, 57s. The only one I have. And what is the only one you have? What is the only mic you have? Another little 440. Those are very popular. Another 440. Very popular mic. Lou will be very happy about that. I think they did a great job with that. SM57, 414. You don't have an um, you don't have a mic yet, Anita? At least get yourself a 57 or get something that's kind of uh, affordable. You know, we were talking about EV, the ND257s, about those neodymium capsules, about how those were completely affordable microphones that you could get used. We were seeing them online for about 30 bucks. Um, so there's tons of options of stuff you can get. Um, we do, we're actually doing a deal on my mixing course, uh, which I believe is 50% off. So, um, you know what, Matt, if he's watching, could put that in underneath. It's very difficult trying to read this chat on the, on my cell phone, by the way. I'm not sure why the live chat is not showing. Unfortunately, um, unfortunately it's not showing on here. Let me try one more thing. Sorry about this, everybody. I'm going to see if I can see it now. Hey, now I can see it better. Now I can see it on my screen. So much easier to read than my cell phone. That was very frustrating. Now, the hide button isn't on. It's it's because I was just in the wrong view and I had to get it. To, anyway, it's all good. Hey. No, I did show the chat window. I'm actually watching it now like you're watching it instead of inside of my own window, which is what I normally do. Um, so, yes, yeah, so Matt's already put the cheat sheet up from yesterday. So get Anatomy of a Mix of Bob Horn and Warren Hewitt. Um, okay. And then underneath that, you can get the, the, the cheat sheet. So the reason why I want you to get the cheat sheet is we can talk about all those things. Do you all have the cheat sheet? You can see me clearly now. Great. Do you all, do you all have the cheat sheet? Because we can go through this and talk about it. We can talk about it one by one. So, do, do, do. so I'm actually, this is hilarious. I'm actually going to download my own cheat sheet. So I'm downloading it now. It's pretty funny. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I can see. I've got, I've got the chat. We're good. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm now we're looking at the cheat sheet. So, do you have it, everybody? Go and click the link underneath so it says before you st start mixing download the top the 10 home studio tips cheat sheet here the cheat sheets underneath the underneath the video i'll also put it in here if matt's not doing it yet i'll do it as well can you get that does that link click a deadpool shirt i'd love a deadpool shoot okay so the um Thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying the cheat sheets. I'm doing it again. So get that cheat sheet. Do you see it? Cheating is good. The cheat sheet, yes. I keep posting the link. I'm going to post it again. Also, underneath the video, the link is there. There's also some of my favorite compressors, and there's also the Bob and Warren course with the big discount at the moment. Okay. My assistant is wearing one. Oh, you're wearing a Deadpool shirt? I, shirt? Am. I, am. I didn't notice. I was too busy looking that way and not at his shirt. Oh, there it is. I see it. Uh, you don't mind putting on a cup of coffee before you leave, do you? Oh, yeah. Just going to put on some coffee on. Okay, so you got it. Okay, the link works. Everybody got it? 
Oh, funny spotted Marley. All right. Okay. So your workflow. Let's talk about workflow. So this is what I wrote in the cheat sheet. This is one of the most important parts of your process. It, can't, it shouldn't be underestimated. I keep things set up and ready to go at any given notice. I can pick up an electric guitar, a bass, sing or sit behind my drum kit and play at any time. Now, for many of us, that might not be easy, primarily because you may only have a one or two, four, six, eight or eight input I.O. This is where a patch bay comes to life. Having mics or DAs patched permanently into a patch bay makes it easy to patch directly into your I.O. OK, so let's think about that for a moment. Do any of you use patch bays? Um, hey, hey, Pete, Peter from uh, Scott Space Lessons. Um, so do any of you use cheat, uh, cheat sheets? Yeah, you should use my cheat sheets. Do any of you use patch bays? Patch bays are phenomenally useful. As you know, there's a big mess of spaghetti over there on my patch bay. But it's a phenomenal thing. You don't? Yes. Central Oregon recording, yes. Uh, Martin uh, Franken, yes. Uh, yes. No. Got to. What's a patch bay? Okay, Larry, good question. So a patch bay is where we can bring all of our mics and mic prees into one place. Now, I think for you guys and girls, if you don't have external mic prees or you don't have many, you could just have your mics patched on that. Now, it you don't – basically, it's just going to make your life a lot easier. Either It's either that or if you don't have a patch bay, then you've got to have all your mic cables – like collected together and all labeled really, really well, and then just plug in. The reality is, is that if you've got a one, two, four, six, or eight input system, even with eight inputs, as soon as you're using eight on the drums, what are you going to do if you want to do bass? You're going to have to like unpatch everything and have it ready to go. My point is, is to, when it comes to recording, you want to set up a system which is as simple to use as possible. Oi, Terry Doyle has a 96 way patch, but I think. I don't know how many I've got, but you, you know, you're right up there. Um, oh, thank you, Diego. So there's, there is a patch bay video. Um, so normally, semi normally and through. Yes, basically everything. Um, the, the reason why you might want a normal um, is normaling is probably the way to go for a lot of your inputs. So all of your drum inputs could be on a normal patch bay because basically if you've got kick one, snare two, you know, uh, hi-hat three, overheads, you know, four, five, whatever it might be, you know, toms, you know, whatever you might be, you might want to just normal those to the inputs on your I.O. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm assuming that most of you are using, not all of you, but most of you are using I.O.s that have mic pre. So you're literally, this is just for the, this is just for mics. But ultimately... A patch is a patch bay. It's a way to access multiple mic pre's, multiple mics, compressors, whatever you might have, so that you can leave things permanently patched and then just switch them out when you need them, rather than having to run into you know the other room and repatch all the mic cables all the time. Now, obviously, it means you're going to buy more mic cables and probably have you know a handful more mics, but ultimately it's the way that you want to go the way i have my studio set up is i can pick up an electric guitar like this which i always have one in my hand obviously as you know plug it in to a cable down on the ground there go into a di and my amp and start recording so that's the first thing it's ease of use and if you don't have a patch bay it's okay but make it easy that you can input things without having to like repatch from from scratch obviously a lot of you that have like mini commercial studios like proper little studios in your houses probably already have patch bays but whichever way you go it's just about thinking about your workflow making it easier for yourself and sometimes that means buying a second di sometimes that means buying a couple of more dynamic mics things that aren't necessarily expensive but mean that you can leave things permanently set up because I believe if you've got one DI and you're repatching it every single time to be the keyboard DI, to be the bass DI, to be the guitar DI, to be whatever, it gets a little exhausting over a while. We have two or three, I think we have four DIs, and we have one on bass, we have one on guitar. The Acme's on bass at all times. As you know, it's an amazing DI. The guitar one is uh, the Rupert Neve, you know, Rupert's RNDI. Uh, we also have the BAE one. You know, we have all these different DIs, but they're patched so that we you just plug in a guitar cable and off you go. Okay, so 
start thinking about that. Think about your workflow. What works for you? Draw diagrams, draw a drum kit, write down what mics you're going to use and where you're going to put them. Get sort of organized on how you're going to do it, how many cables you need. Maybe you have to buy a couple of extra mic cables, but get all organized so that you can move quickly from one idea to another. It's not just good for you when you're on your own, but it's great for when you have a band in and you've got to patch things in. Um, I'm frustrated trying to figure out if I should use line in or instrument recording DI. Well, that's two. That's three different things. Um, a DI input would actually, if it's on a, if it's on a, um, if it's on an IO, it's the same as an instrument in. But if it's an actual XLR input, then you'll need a DI box to take, change it from a, an instrument signal to a um, a mic input, which is what an XLR would be. But a, a line input is totally different. It's a completely different level. That would be a line, a line from, say, maybe a keyboard, which has a lot of output, or anything else that's putting out a much, much higher level signal. An instrument and a line are two different things. Instrument and line, two different things. An XLR input, 99.999% of the time, is going to be a mic input. I've seen things that are wired strangely, but basically you've got mic input, line input, and instrument input. Instrument input would take a level from a, a guitar and boost it up to a mic level. You would then, it's probably, I don't know how those I, each individual IO is wired, but I my guess is, is it probably goes straight to the mic pre from that, treating it as though it went through a DI. Use multiple interfaces on Windows all the time. To use balanced or unbalanced cable, cables on patch base. I mean, you try to stay as, um, you know, um, I tried to stay as balanced as possible in all situations. I have a separate XLR patch bay because I didn't want phantom power running through the line level bay. That true. That is also true. I mean, for most drum mics, you know, a lot of the time you'll be using dynamic mics. But again, patch bay is one situation and one example of how you can solve it. If you don't want to use a patch bay, that's fine. You can use a bunch of cables, but just make sure they're really, really nicely, you know, tied together or you know, just use cable ties, and then when they come out of the other end and they're ready to plug in, label them really beautifully. Like the, what they are is like the kick mic, kick mic, and then in the worst case scenario, you're just patching it into your I/O at, uh, at the end. You know. Okay, so let's move on. So you've all got the cheat sheet. Once again, have you downloaded the cheat sheet so you know what I'm talking about? Here's a link. Um, how does the patch bay route a signal from input to output? Well, it depends, like we're talking about. You can have it normaled, which means you could plug in and it immediately goes to the output. You could do it that way, or you could have it so it's not normaled at all, so you have to always um, plug directly out of the output into your device. But that, that's sort of subtleties that we should get into in another time because we're going to try and get through a lot of stuff here. It's more about the focus on your workflow. Even if you don't use a patch bay, think about your workflow. Think about how this is going to work for you. All right, next up is organize your DAW. This is as simple as having a very basic template. Having your drum mic inputs ready to go, labeled kick, snare, hi-hat, rack, floor, overheads, etc. Your bass guitar, keys, virtual instruments such as synths or virtual drums, such as addictive drums, easy drum, and slate trigger, essentially all the things that you use regularly. Okay, does that all make sense? Basically, you want to have a template, not just for mixing. I know 99.9% .9 of all of the channels here are all talking about mixing, whether it be Dave Pensado's or Graham's or anything. It's all about mixing, you know, and I get it. Everybody wants to talk about mixing and, and you know, it's very, it, it becomes easy after a while because there's so many videos now that we can all make our own videos. And I, I encourage you all to, I think you should get into doing your own YouTube stuff and creating your own content as well. But ultimately recording needs a template as well. And if you watch that video, I talked a little bit about just a session I opened up, like an early session of a song. Um, you're very welcome. It's it's Tommy, Tommy Nutter. <laughs> so basically, you saw that I had like a kick, a snare, a hat, overheads, toms, all laid out, and then I had bass. So you'll have a template ready to go with all the inputs in it. So you can just open up that template at the beginning of the day, whenever you start working, plugging your guitar, hit record, and off you go, you're recording. It's it, it's not just about mixing. Templates are just as useful for recording. Hey, Walker. So think about that as well. Uh, I think there's a lot of good cheap 
ta um, patch bays. Um, off the top of my head, I can't answer specifically. Here's the cheat sheet again, by the way. Um, oh, Nitric are, ch uh, are cheap. Wow. Uh, you just, Randy, as long as you've downloaded the cheat sheet, you'll know where we are. We're just on the second point at the moment, which was organizing your DAW. So what we're talking about is having a common set of inputs on your DAW labeled really well um, so that when, yeah, the flock one is amazing, Martin. So that when you open up a session to start a song, the template is there ready for you to go, all the drum inputs. But it's not just about guitars and basses and whatever. It's also your favorite virtual instruments, your favorite drum. If it happens to be Stephen Slate's Trigger or Easy Drummer or Addictive like I use or any of those ones, have it ready to go. So when you open a session template, if it's if it's songwriting, you can just plug in and, and off you go. You can start tapping away. So create a template. The template should be created from your favorite things, from your fa from your inputs, ready to go, but also the favorite virtual instruments to go you use. It says Noitrix and Samson are both 100 bucks. yeah. Um, and we can talk more about um, patch bays. We'll do a whole thing on patch bays. I'm just sort of like – and it, as like I said, you don't necessarily have to have a patch bay. It's just the way I like to work to have everything wired together, ready to go. Okay, do you have the cheat sheet? If you don't, download it so we know what we're talking about. Okay, so next up is don't focus too soon on sound design. As you can see from the Little Empire song, which is the song in yesterday's video, please check out the video, I added some sound design, some swooshes, and other noises and explosions. However, they came after I'd written a chorus and wanted to enhance it. Spending too much time on these early on would take, a t take away from time from the writing and production stage. Okay, so... Everybody loves sound design. Everybody does it. I mean, it's 99% um, of the songs that I hear on the radio, especially all the pop songs, even like the latest 30 Seconds to Mars or any of the Coldplay stuff. These bands are getting really into massive EDM um, stuff now. All of this stuff uses an enormous amount of sound design. Let's be honest. All the explosions and the things whipping around like panning effects and you know lots of lots of edm and and ableton kind of pitch things all of which are phenomenal i'm working with a rock band at the moment with bob marlette and we've been referencing bring me the horizon and they just do amazing great stuff randy um I, i've been referencing and they just do so much sound design it's amazing however don't do it while you're in the creative process leave it to the end don't don't do it while you're in the creative process. Leave it to the end. And, um, you know, that's something that you should be doing. That's something you should be doing, you know, when, you know, at the end of a song, not in the middle of it. You know, it's fine to do it, but don't do it while you're trying to be creative. Okay. Um, does that make sense? It's great stuff to do, but it's something you should do. It's it's almost something quite often I leave when I'm mixing. All right, next up. Don't do <laughs> too much time tweaking, number four, number quattro. All of us are guilty of this. I certainly am. There have been so many times, uh, so many times when I spent hours tweaking electronic snare, only to have spent two minutes choosing, <laughs> only when I could have spent two minutes choosing one that fit better. This is where taking a break from one area is a great idea. In a rut on a snare or bass sound, try a different snare or bass, or simply work on another part and come back with fresh ears. I know that sounds so obvious. To, I know it sounds like such an obvious thing, but it's a reality. You know, I've done it so many times myself. I've sat there and I've sat there and I've been working on tons and tons of different stuff. And I get focused in on an idea, and before you know it, I've been tweaking this snare sound for a half an hour or an hour, and it's just not getting any better, or it's getting different. And then I listen to it, and I think to myself, all I've done is brighten it or added some more body to it, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, there's actually snares that sound exactly like this immediately. And I could have gone through my snare library you know, beep, beep, boop, 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 and found the right one straight away. And it's not always just about that. I mean, I'm talking about obviously samples, but it's not always just about that. It could also be, um, it could also be about um, the camera keeps refocusing. I'm, I'm sorry, there's not much I can do about it. But thanks for pointing it out. Um, so <laughs> the 
the um uh what was i gonna say <laughs> uh the um the eq like eqs are what i'm what i'm really really guilty of you know it, eqs is like when i spend a long long time like like getting in there and extracting all this kind of stuff i mean i know that there's this sort of idea that every single frequency that's boosted a little high should be removed you know it's like isn't it interesting when you watch like some of the some of the most famous mixers and they're doing all these broad like boosts of high end and everybody's like oh my god all they're doing is boosting the high end or doing this and then you go to like you know the youtube mixers and they're like pulling out 57 tiny little frequencies and like blah, 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 and they're doing like all this incredible detailed work and then you listen to it and it sounds like blah <laughs> the vocal sounds like hur, 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 hur. it doesn't have any excitement to it all they've done is they've they've literally looked at the free uh, at um uh, you know the frequency analyzer or, or gone to their fab filter eqs and stuff and seen all the frequencies that are a little too boosted and then just pulled them out one by one um you know and so it's ended up with something which is really really dull and boring sounding so if you're doing a lot of that maybe take take five minutes if you go on your vocal and you're obsessing about every single boosted frequency take five minutes away from it so it's the same thing it's not just snare samples it's not just the bass sound it's like um you do that vocal thing again <laughs> it's like i was doing this you know i've watched so many people talk about it and i've watched like videos get obsessed about these little tiny detail stuff and it's great you know it's absolutely fantastic to spend time um you know correcting problems but if you literally correct every single problem all you do is correct a problem create a new problem correct that problem create a new problem correct that problem create another problem and before you know it you're going to look at this eq and it's going to have like 50 tiny little things pulled out of it four different dynamic eqs to on it and the vocal is um yeah and there's uh, the whistle frequency is always a new one because i've never heard of that until youtube it's like one of those things it's like yeah you know we used to just solve that with really judicious uh, dsing so but yeah be careful on that because i think that's one of those new things you know another it, it's another one of those new things about don't high pass you know another another piece of bad information that's out there so be careful yeah don't mix with your eyes use your ears very true ansi all right hey ansi where have you been we haven't seen you for a while have you been busy um okay let us get to the next one oh, you know what let's do one more giveaway EQ doing recording. Yes, Paul says EQ can be your friend or your phone. Um, EQ during the recording or not? Yes. I, I don't EQ vocals when I'm recording. I might high pass if I'm in a really, really horrible room. There's a ton of low end. Johnny says that even high passes his dinner. So let's do another giveaway. Okay, we've done we've done favorite mic. If you only had one mic, what would it be? What else can we do? Hmm. Let us do. Um, all right. What what virtual drums do you use? So I'm interested because I've got an ulterior motive. So if do you use addictive? Are you using easy? If you use any kind of virtual drums, what do you use? If you use a sample pack, what do you use? I want to know what you're using. Ah, oh, easy too. Our oh, favorite YouTube channel. <laughs> Hi from the Netherlands. Easy Drummer, Addictive Superior, Addictive 2, Easy Drummer Slate, More Easy Drummer, Addictive. There's a lot of Easy Drummer here, a lot of Addictive. Random samples, nice. Do you all have my samples? Superior. So there's quite, there's quite a good split here. I don't know Perfect Drummer. Don't know what damage is. NI battery, I haven't seen that for a while. pre sinus drum loop, sampler, you have mine. Thank you. And your samples. Thank you, Mark. Oh, thank you, you'd stuff. That's fantastic. Drummer Gog, Easy Drummer, Johnny L, fantastic. 
All right, great stuff. All right, Tom C. All right, let's move on. Congratulations, Johnny L. All right, so monitoring in more than one way. Okay, so this is number five. If you haven't downloaded the cheat sheet, please download it. I'm putting the link in several times. The, the, the link is also underneath the video. Okay. Um, so number five, speakers are an ideal way that most mixers monitor. However, most of the time they're in acoustically well-treated rooms and they probably know, which they that they probably know very well. Like my room is pretty well acoustically treated. If you can see up in the corner there, there's bass traps. Can you see it? It's all the way along there. There's all the way along there. There's like stuff hidden in the ceiling. It's a pretty well treated room. You know, it's got padding all over the place. It's not the it's not the, the flattest room in the world. It's not George Massenburg, but it's pretty flat. And I've also had Genelec come in and measure out the room, you know, and we know that how it sounds in the room. And I'm also really used to it. I've been in this room now for about seven years, so I know it well. So that sort of takes me out of the running. It's like I know these rooms. Uh, I know this room. So most people at home don't have this option. It's very likely that you'll have acoustic issues in your room, room and then it, and that can affect the way you hear the mix, leading you to boost or cut certain frequencies incorrectly. So what quite often happens is you're in a room, and we do this in the academy. Um, for those of you who aren't academy members, please check it out, because every month what we do is we put up a new multi-track in the academy. And um, the great thing about it is um, we we do a mixed critique and everybody listens to each other's mixes. It's really, really super supportive community. We don't have time for people that um, are not supportive. You know, there's lots of other places they can go and lots of other kind of academies and, and uh, you know, places where people knock each other. We, we don't do that there. It's all about helping each other. So it's rather wonderful. And but some what quite hap often happens is we identify these issues for people because a mix comes up because maybe there's 30 or 40 or 50 or 100 plus people are mixing this song. And each week we listen to the songs and people, you know, people are helping out. And, and it might be like, wow, there's a lot of low end in your mix or there's too much high end or there's too much this, that and the other. And we ask about what speakers they're using and they'll tell us what speakers they're using. And then we might talk about, well, then maybe sometimes I'll say, well, maybe it's a problem with your room. If you don't have enough low end, maybe there's too much in your room. So you're not boosting it where you're needing it and you're overly cutting it. So these are very, very typical problems. Um, headphones, as you know, uh, that you know well are an excellent way to check your mixes and do not underestimate the car test. If you listen to music in your car frequently, you will know how it sounds. So triple check it there. Bottom end issues in particular are very evident with most car stereos. Okay, now I know there's been, there's a quite a few successful videos about car tests and one of them by somebody I really, really like, but I have to disagree entirely. Um, there is nothing wrong with using the car test. If you drive your car and you listen to music all the time in your car, then you are going to know how it sounds. So it's a really, really good idea to do a car test on your mix. If it sounds like poop in your in your car when your other stuff that you listen to doesn't, then there is a problem with your mix. It's not just like I saw lots of different excuses why that might be. The fundamental reason, if something sounds bad when other things sound good, then there are issues that you have to correct. And that's OK. And the biggest one is always the low end. So I trust the car test personally. I always trust the car test. And I've worked with some of the big, biggest mixers in the world that do that, that go to their cars. So don't. And as, Steve, as Chris Norris is just saying here, my car is literally the only place I still listen to CDs. Yeah, do the walk test. It's no, it makes a lot of sense, Alexi. And not everybody has cars that lives in major cities. We only have one car for our family. We have one car that my wife drives and I use Uber. We don't need two cars, you know? Hey, Anita, we don't need two cars. That's just the way it is, you know? Do you get a better sound from a VW or BM, BMW? Hey, it depends on the start, the, 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 uh, the, the system, you know what I mean? Hey, Lisa, how many mixes, how are the mixes going? I have the same headphones, look forward to it. I don't know what headphones they're using, so. And then if you have headphones that you know really, really well and you listen to your music, check your mixes on that. Check your mixes with earbuds. You know, use all the different formats. Now, for me, I've got Genelex, I've got Unity Super Rocks, I've got the little baby iLouds here, and I've got their little baby Genelex. And I've got several different pairs of headphones. As you know, I'm a big fan of the blues now. We use those every day. 
Um, I have the Focals as well. If I want to absolutely fall in love with everything and think it sounds amazing. <laughs> Sorry, just the Focals are so good. Uh, Los Angeles. I'm English, but I live in Los Angeles. Although apparently if I say I'm English, I offend people. Um, I'm British. And I'm English, United Kingdom, British, European, and from the world. Okay, so. So, yeah. H of sevens, love them. They're great. All right. So don't be afraid to reference in many areas. If you're only listening on one set of speakers, you will not get a good balance. I mean, every mixer I know references on other things. Now, whether they do that all the time, they're probably working mainly on one set of speakers, but get different speakers. If you haven't downloaded this cheat sheet yet, download it. Here is the link. It's also underneath the, it's also underneath the video. So check that out as well. Okay, next up. And please like and share. We've already got our uh, obligatory dislike. Thank you very much. Hope you uh, hope I offended you nicely um, by saying, what would I have said? Oh, yes, a high passing. I'm not allowed to talk about high passing. Um, <laughs> okay, so please like and share. There's 387 people watching. Thank you ever so much. Um, and there's 141 likes. So if we could turn that into 387 likes, that would be amazing. Okay, so next on our cheat sheet. And if you haven't downloaded the cheat sheet, here it is. Thank you, Tony. Um, what are the dangers of not using a reference mix? No dangers whatsoever, James. Um, I, I don't use a reference mix all the time. I only use it sometimes. Uh, you know, I just... <laughs> it wasn't me. It's okay. It could have been the car stereo comparison. Oh, that's what it was. Say low cut instead of high pass. So please like and share. I'd really appreciate it. 395 people watching. Thank you. Please like and share. Okay, next up. All right, so if you haven't already downloaded the cheat sheet, here we go. Um, okay, so next up, use stereo enhancements sparingly. This is a big one for me. This is, And this ruins a lot of mixes that I've heard people when they send to me. The great thing about the Academy is... I get to hear the songs that I produced, engineered, and mixed be remixed and have additional production done by people. And talk about being able to help people. Can you imagine how wonderful that is that I can help you? Because I recorded these songs. I recorded these songs, and some of them have like Vinnie Carluta playing drums, or Dan Rothschild playing bass, or John Button playing bass, or Sean Hurley playing bass. And you get to use these songs in your portfolio. So what is amazing, you have all these incredible musicians, sometimes recorded at Sunset Sound, sometimes it's recorded, you know, here, sometimes it's recorded uh, United, you know, sometimes it's done on tape and transferred to digital for you to mix. There's all kinds of different scenarios. But the great thing about it is I know these recordings so well that when I hear these mixes, I can, I can comment on them, you know, knowing fully what to say. And so it's really, really good. Um, okay. Please uh, like and share, 379 watching. That'd be amazing. What video is Vinny on? Um, Vi Vinny is not in the video. He's inside the Academy, Tom, and he's on the Ollie Alcott Blues track. And there's Little Empire. There's all kinds of stuff. Here's the cheat sheet if you haven't got it. So, um, you, Stereo Enhancement is fun, but it's also very dangerous. It can leave a mix sending. Oh, it says sending. Should say, Matt, can you change that to sounding hollow? Mix sounding hollow and can cause all kinds of phase polarity issues. I tend to only use stereo enhancement on certain pads or synths that need to be widened to create more space for the vocal, kick, snare, or bass in the center of the mix. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, please correct that from sending to sounding hollow. Um, so, do you understand what I mean? The thing with, with to get things to sound wider, um, uh, the Spitfire's on the left. Oh, yeah, there's Spitfires all over the place. Um, there's also a space shuttle there. I'm just an aviation person. There's the space shuttle. There. Uh, I love aviation. Um, I have two other companies that, I, that I've started, and they both, they both have plane names. You're going to hear more about them. Yes, please like and share. Okay, so, so basically, yes, when you're widening things, you're messing with the phase. If you to get stuff to be left and right super wide and to not feel like it's coming out of the middle, you start canceling out frequencies in the middle. Most of the time, the low end, um, I don't really have a go to stereo enhancer. I mess with a couple of them and choose them. I don't stereo enhance at all. 
rarely and when i do it's only on <laughs> yes mark it's only on things like synth pads and maybe some strings and stuff that i'm trying to get out of the way of the middle i never do it on the whole mix i only do it love the hawker hurricane um i only do it um yeah, lots of hard panning on, on, on Darks of the Moon. Yeah, hard panning is fantastic. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you use those stereo-enhancing plugins that are messing with the phase to send things left and right. You do that on a full mix. It makes me feel giddy. Oh, Bell X1 and X2. That's great. That's wonderful. So use them sparingly and try not to ever use them on the full mix. Definitely use them sparingly. All right, next up monitor at low levels this is huge save your ears they're your best tools monitoring at high levels for extended periods of time can not only give you completely the wrong idea of how you mix and sound but can give you hearing damage if you have to listen loud do it for very short periods of time and then return to the lower level to do detailed repetitive work now the first thing i remember that happened to me is uh, the thank you michael the one thing that i remember really really well when I was younger, like in my early 20s, I would listen to things on loop and I would give myself so much hearing damage, you know, potentially because I'd listen super loud. And yes, it's, um, yes, you're right. Anne. So um, so I've listened to this stuff so loud on repeat for like half an hour, trying to learn how to EQ or compress a snare drum in the middle of a drum mix. And it was ridiculous. So. Um, Always wear protection at shows. So I highly, highly recommend that you do the same. Always do the same. Um, so, but remember that a lot of guys and girls, when they're mixing, do listen loud for short periods of time. That's okay. If you want to know, I do have different mixes, uh, templates for mixing and tracking, yes. Um, so, but I create the mix template from the first song that I mix, Nick. Um, so once I've mixed a song and it's got what I want and it's part of an album, then I'll move it. How's my how's my hearing loss? Ah, uh, for some unknown reason, I'm in the top one percentile for my age group, which means for my age, I am I've got the best hearing. I think I protected my ears, but I think also my doctor, who's also a musician, said to me that a lot of people that do music for a living, especially producers and engineers and mixers, have the ability to hear frequencies better because they also understand how to focus. Does that make sense? It's a bit like having guitar articulation. You know, if somebody gave me, you know, if somebody gave me another job to do with my hands, you know, if somebody gave me another job to do with my hands, I'd probably be really good at the job because, do you understand what I mean? Because my articulation and my fingering is really, really good. So think about that. You know, if I had to do some typing job or something like that, I don't type properly. I'd, I tend to peck, but if I learned how to type, I could probably do it pretty quickly because I am, you understand what I mean? I, it's articulation. So you're hearing, you're, <laughs> sorry, Phil, you're listening when you're hearing to certain frequencies. Um, so I can hear stuff because I have the focus of it. Okay, so protect your ears, listen at low. Thank you ever so much, Pieta. Um, okay, so one more time. If you haven't got the download of cheat sheet, here it is. And if you haven't liked and shared, please do it now. There's 401 of you watching. This is fantastic. Piano players will always be the best typers. Maybe. Um, okay. Next up. Know your plugins. This is a big one for me. Number eight, know your plugins. It's better to have a handful of plugins that you know than hundreds you've never tried. Of course, you can expand your plugin library as you progress. I mean, I have tons of plugins. I love all my plugins I've collected. However, know the ones you have well, especially the effects one or two, especially with effects. One or two reverb plugs in will give you many choices. Many delays also have multiple emulations with just one plugin and with the EQ and saturation, you can adjust them. So what I mean, like, just to clarify what I'm saying there, is like you can open up a delay these days and they have, um, hey, Zach, Ah, uh, all right. No diet sobers. Want to thank you. Thank you, Zach, for buying me lunch. Woo! Ah, uh, and you're loving the academy. Thank you very much, Zach. We love having you in the academy. Thank you. Ah, uh, if anybody wants to buy any of the other team members lunch, that'd be great. 
You want to buy Daryl Thorpe lunch? He's probably got more expensive taste than me. I think he's got more Grammys. I've got four Grammy nominations. I think he's got seven. They've got seven albums that he's won Grammys on. So I'll be seeing him in a little bit. So if you want to buy him lunch. How do you feel about cutting tracks of our click? Love doing that. Depends on the song. So, yeah, if you want to buy Daryl lunch or one of my team members, please do. Thank you ever so very much, Zach. Uh, uh, well, the Academy is uh, every single month. The Fray were nominated four times. Ah, Michael B. Is that for Andrew and Eric? Thank you, Michael. So the in the Academy, we have a new multi-track every single month. So you join either month, if monthly, you get the that month and the previous one. If you join yearly, you get about 30. There's about 30 multi-tracks in there. Ah, oh, thanks ever so much, John. You rock. Thank you ever so much. Um, you you are all absolutely incredible. Thank you, John. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Zach. I really appreciate it. I uh, know we didn't win, but we got four. We got four nominations. Um, yeah, we didn't win because we weren't very hip. We weren't a hip band, even though they were like the biggest selling band of that year uh, on both albums. They didn't win. You know, it's uh, it, it is what it is. You know, this it's a popularity contest. That's that's what uh, Grammys are. It's OK. I'm happy. I mean, in the studio here, I have about four or five platinum or gold records. In the house, I have a, um, a couple in there. If you want to, uh, there's a little, if you go to the bottom of the chat, there's a little dollar sign. And you can actually send me money. That'd be fantastic. Okay, so how do I measure headphone levels? That's a really good question. Wow. That's a fantastic question. Basically, just start really, really really low and just kind of work up to a point where it starts to make some sense um it's not tea this is a cup of coffee i've already had a cup of pg tips this morning anyway i want to get back to our 10 productions and if you haven't got the cheat sheet please download it here it is if you haven't already liked and shared please like and share yeah exactly it's not the end of the world we didn't win grammys it's nice to be nominated a bunch of times Okay, so knowing your plugins. So basically what I was saying about delay plugins and e and reverb plugins is a lot of the time you can use the stock delays and the stock um, reverbs because some of the stuff you want to do would be like sidechain compression on reverb, sidechain compression on delays, EQing a reverb so it doesn't have too much low end, EQing a delay so it doesn't have too much lo low end, EQing a delay so it doesn't have too much high end. Hey, Randy, thank you ever so much. So all of these tricks are absolute. Thank you, Randy. You are a rock star. So all of these tricks are really, really useful because what they will do is lessen the need for you to have 10,000 different delays and reverb plugins. Now, don't get me wrong. It's nice to have these great emulations. I love them. I absolutely love them. Um, I do love my PG tips. Um, and oh, yeah, the Valhalla's are amazing. Yes, it's by Warren Lunch Day. I'll uh, buy my team lunch as well. Yeah, uh, Michael B saying using a uh, measure of the dB meter. Okay, let's do another giveaway. Ah, uh, thank you ever so much, A99 Productions. You rock. Very kind of you. So um, let's do another giveaway. We've done favorite mic. Um, let's think. What else can we do? Hmm. I want to be all right. I just want to do this because I'm a music fan. We're all here, as you can tell. I'm not just a producer engineer guy. You know what I mean? I, I actually like playing music. Ah, oh, thank you. Oh, Andrew and Eric just got bought lunch. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you, Andrew and Eric will be very happy. Excuse me a second. Um, so I have to get off any second. I have to get off. I'm heading out to, um, I'm heading down to Sunset Sound. So because we're all music fans, um, uh, Daryl's running late. Uh, so I'm telling you, I'm running late too. Running late too. The guys will be there already setting up filming 
Good. There you go. So, what is your favorite album? You know how I always do this to show you this is what we do every day? That I'm not like a professional YouTuber. It's all a little chaotic. It's all a little flying by the sea of your pants. I'm not a professional YouTuber. Thank you. I do wear flip-flops when it gets hot. It's been really hot here. The whole idea of doing this YouTube channel, and sorry that I know somebody, somebody's upset that, about the refocusing. Yeah, it's, it, it's, a, it's one of those cameras that focuses in. So when I went back there, I tried to focus on me. Um, oh, Selling England by the Pound. That's a good one, Scott Bird. Um, Dark Side of the Moon. Oh, so many great art experience. Wow, so many great. Look, one thing you all have in common is these are all great production masterpieces. Temple of the Dog. You're all a bunch of producers, engineers, musicians, and mixers here. Goodbye, Yellow Brick Road. Wow, Let It Be. I love Let It Be. Physical Graffiti, Appetite for Destruction, Superfly, Nursery Crime, Masterpiece. Love the Beatles. That's a great one. Uh, you Too, Gloria. Great. Making movies. I love making movies. Wow, what a too many great albums. That's an, also a good idea. That's a good answer. The Wall. Thank you, Mark. I'm with you on that one. Who's next? You know, Metallica, Garage Seas. Uh, wow, Rio, uh, The Wall again, everything Vi, all Beatles, in fact, that's great. Dark Side of the Moon, Close to the Edge, Back in Black, Pump, Aerosmith, Muse, Absolution, great album, Thriller, Deep Purple in Rock, Revolver. Wow, these are all great answers because they're all the miracle, yep, because they're all masterpieces of production, masterpieces of production. Johnny, what did you choose, Johnny? What did Johnny choose? I'm dying to know what Johnny chose. Johnny, what did you choose? You won. Johnny Amato won. Miles Ahead. Ah, Anne, look at you. Miss Sophisticated. Yes, that is a beautiful album. Absolutely beautiful album. Yeah, congrats, Johnny. What did you choose? Viva La, yeah, Viva La Vida is a great album. Yeah, Asia. Yeah, Innuendo. Innuendo, look at you. That's that's going out on a game. The game is one of my favorites. Bohemian Rhapsody is my favorite. Um, John Mayer. What did uh, what did Johnny choose? Johnny, you won. Are you still there? If you haven't already, please like and share. Um, anything by Ban Jovi. Thank you, Tommy. All right, we're moving on. Okay, number nine. High pass the super low frequency. That's number nine. High pass the super low frequency. If you haven't already downloaded the cheat sheet, here it is again. It's also underneath. It's also underneath the uh, video down there. So number nine. Okay, just because your small monitor, just because your small monitors in your home studio don't reproduce twenty, thirty, or even forty hertz, doesn't mean it's not there. You can't. You can tighten a kick drum by removing twenty hertz and below, and will really open up and focus your low end. If you're unsure of what's going on in the low end, then use frequency analyzers, and you'll notice low end rumble that's taken energy taking away taking energy away from your mix and causing an enormous amount of mud. This is really, really important. I know we're having to combat the, the missing and disinformation out there on a daily basis, but basically you do want to clean up your low end. But one of the big point I was saying there is like, even my Genelex, my 1032s, you can't actually hear 2030, mainly 20 or 30 Hertz. It's not being reproduced at any kind of high level there. So if I have a tambourine, and it just sounds like, ch -ch 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 -ch. and I don't high pass it, I'm an idiot. Because I've got an AC unit in here, which is really, really quiet. It's a really quiet AC unit. But the guy or the girl is shuffling their feet. They're, there's a little bit, they've got breath noise. It's like, there's going to be, whoa, whoa. so don't be afraid to high pass the low frequencies out of the mix. That can be a massive buildup. I have sat in a room with Bob Ludwig, the great Bob Ludwig, and listened to one of, one of my mixes and heard this low frequency rumble, which was not associated with the kick. And by the way, Wood Face by Crowded House is a masterpiece. Thank you for pointing that one out. Now I want to listen to it. So you get what I'm saying. It is all about clean up the low end on your mix. It's perfectly fine. You have nothing to worry about high passing. You don't need to high pass the signal at like 1K. But when, we, when you're talking about high passing, it's confusing people. High pass the low lows out of the way. Okay, last but no means least, don't overdo your master bus processing. 
This is a big subject. So many of us annihilate the master bus in order to get volume. We've all done it. I've done it. I've put two or three compressors, a couple of limiters, EQs, all kinds of, you know, multiband compressors and all that stuff. Be cautious. Mix with just a gentle amount of compression and light IQ on the master bus. And if you can master the song properly at a, you can, oh, at a later date, that's not an alert date. Matt, can you change that? should say master the song properly at a later date. God bless spell check. If you can't, then be judicious on how much limiting you use. A small amount will bring up the level nicely. Shave a few harsh transients. Too much will flatten your mix and lose all sense of dynamics and depth. This is a big one. We've all done it. We've all done it. I've done it a million times where I've overdone this stuff. Ah, thank you ever so much, Tony. I appreciate it. Okay, so I'm just putting the cheat sheet there. Please like and share. There's 364 of you watching. It, um, I don't master while I mix, Phil. But I will. Um, that's nicely. I mean, I do compress an EQ on my mix. Um, if I'm mixing hybrid, I've got an SSL bus compressor, which is giving me three maximum four dBs worth of gain reduction. And I've got a pair of Steve Jackson's Poltex over there. Give me some boom and fizz. Give me some 60 and some 12. And that, so that's on all the time. Ah, oh, Donnie. Well, thank you. You can buy me lunch as well, Donnie. I'll always take lunch. <laughs> so. Boom and fizz. You can put the boom and fizz on it and you can put, I love doing that. And do you know what? Every mixer I know has that kind of thing, whether they're mixing in the box or not. Just get careful about trying to master it while you're working. Now, I don't mind the idea of printing my mix and then having a separate mastering time. Um, you know, but I will always run compression on EQ on my bus. I do. It's not that I don't do it. I just try not to overdo it. To me, that's two different things. Um, Chris Noyce says all he does is use the master bus ozone. ozone. See, I don't mind using it. I just try to use it sparingly. Tape saturation on master bus. Or, or, you know, Bob Horn uses tape saturation on the master bus, Richard Furch. If you get this course underneath there, which is we've got a deal on, you'll see he does uh, saturation. Thank you, Brett. And feel free to buy us lunch. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to get going any second. We've got 285 likes, 361 people watching. If you can take this over to 300 likes, I'd really appreciate it. Describe real quick what printing is, please. Oh, okay, John. So basically, printing is old school way of talking about bouncing a mix to tape. See that tape machine behind me over there? So we would print to another tape machine, a two-track two tape machine. Um, and so we would call that printing. Nowadays, it's bouncing. So, but those of us that started in like making records in the 80s and 90s, like I did, made records on tape. I was at that place where I was just crossing over from, from tape to digital. Yeah, exactly. Pooper Pan says tape. What's tape? Exactly. But we still, those of us that remember tape still say printing. Print, you know, print the mix. It's just the same as bouncing the mix. So, yeah. Does that make sense? That makes sense, John. 306 likes. Thank you, everybody. Woo! You all rock. <coughs> Have a marvelous time recording and mixing. I'm sorry I've got to leave on the dot for only an hour. Usually we go on for about an hour and a half. I haven't used an ADAP for a while, but I love it. Um, tape is what holds up your socks. Thank you, Hans. My favorite girlfriend, Tape. There you go. You all rock. Thank you ever so much for, for just staying here. If you haven't downloaded the cheat sheet, here it is. And also underneath is Bob and mine's course, mixing that little Empire song from Monday. Highly recommend you get it. Um, some of my favorite plugins that people always ask about, the MV2, which is getting a huge amount of love from our followers here. People love it. Followers is the wrong word. Our community. There's nobody following me. You're all helping each other. This is an amazing community. So thank you very much. Thank you, Utsav. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Thanks, Darren. Thanks, Alexi. Thanks, Brett. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Nathan. Thanks, Walker. Great. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Paul. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Hadley, thank you. Um, if you haven't, please make sure you download the cheat sheet so you'll know everything we've been talking about. Of course, get the Bob and Warren course. Um, you can get it here. You'll see Bob Horn's Master Bus. 
Um, this is Bob's Bob and mine's course. It's got 50% off at the moment. Also, my favorite plugins, like I said, the MV2 is amazing. The R base is amazing. The Renaissance Vox Renaissance Compressor. These are ones I use them all the time. Uh, thank you ever so much, Bill. I love it. That's really kind of you. If you want me to do a Skype call with them any day, uh, I can. we can do a Skype call. I love talking to students. You want to do that, Bill? Just email me. Email me at warren at produce like a pro, and we'll set that up. Um, uh, thank you ever so much, Nikita. I really appreciate it. I am very, very happy to do that. So I'll probably go through this cheat sheet stuff, cheat sheet stuff again. I'm going to enjoy sunset. So please um, stay tuned in for Thursday. Yeah, the MV2, if you don't already have that. Oh, by the way, here's, here's, here's the Bob and Warren course I really want you to look at. It's 50% off. Get the cheat sheet. Buy the MV2. It's absolutely amazing. It's usually on a ridiculous deal. It's my favorite go-to plugin. Here it is. Oh, thank you, Alexi. I look forward to that, my friend. That will be a lot of fun. Okay, all have a marvelous time recording and mixing. Um, I will try to figure out how I'm supposed to stop being live. Arr! I'm going to have fun at sunset. I will say hi. I will buy the guys some lunch, and I'll tell them it's from you. Thank you ever so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing, and I'll see you all again soon. Don't forget to look at the Bob Warren course, Bob Warren Hewitt course. Download the cheat sheet. I have a marvelous time recording and mixing.